All right, here we are taking a look at the RTK with my Luba 3000. This is well, RTK 001, takes 12 to 25.2 volts and 2.3 watts, IPX6 rated. Taking out the screws using a two millimeter hex bit, we take the cover up, off here and we have a rubber gasket. So this is what's keeping it actually waterproof, this section here. The, I'm gonna try and hold my camera as still as possible. So this section down here is not actually waterproof, but it shouldn't matter because we have a rubber gasket right there and a rubber gasket right there, try and keep any water out of here. But if water did get in here, it wouldn't actually matter. So this O-ring here lines up with this ring here. Looking inside, we've got one big, massive GPS antenna. This is a dual band antenna. And I'm gonna not fully disconnect it, so I'll have to move the camera here. It's a Har Exxon model HXCSX194A. And this looks to be an interesting design. There's a big RF shield on the bottom, two actually and three antennas coming off of it. That gray wire there, that's for the 900 megahertz antenna that comes out the bottom. We have another black wire. I'm guessing that is one of the G GPS frequencies. And then we have another braided wire that comes over here to an NMCX cable. And I'm guessing that's the other frequency. So my understanding of this GPS module is it uses two different bands because they were refract differently through the ionosphere, which gives you much more precise GPS. I actually talked to a guy who was helping develop this a few years ago, um, get way more precise GPS by using two frequencies. Um, again, we have the same four wires, different colors, which is interesting, that's not standard, red, orange, blue, and green for the LED. And very curious amount of, if this phone will focus, uh, let's see here, those are two 2,000 ohm resistors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve resistors. Very interesting. <clears throat> Not sure why that would be the case if those were wired up. Those must be in parallel. Um, if it's a, if it's a full RGB LED, maybe they're not using a voltage regulator. They're using resistors to drop 25 volts down to 3.3 volts. Anyway, very interesting design. Not sure why they would have done, done it that way. There's probably cheaper ways to do that. Um, coming back to the circuit board here, we have, again, I'm trying to hold the camera still. People uh, weren't too happy about the shaking last time. Um, lighting's not great here, but you can see that this circuit board is conformal coated as well. So even if water did get on this, it would not affect it. And let me zoom in a little bit here. So we have right here at the bottom, we have a four pin header. We have a three pin header. Uh, I see an R, R and a T. I'm guessing that's a UART of some sort. We have a two pin header, another two pin header and a three pin header. None of these are labeled. Uh, I'm guessing they're gonna be debugging. Uh, this I see right here is an E22900T22S. Uh, I'm not sure what that is by eByte. That's gonna be one of the GPS frequencies I'm guessing. And then here's our other one, which is a UM960 by, uh, let's see here, what is that? Unicore Ecom. I see a couple pinouts here, one for five volts, one for 6.1 volts, one for 3.3 volts. I see a voltage regulator, that's probably what's dropping the 25 volts down to a manageable five or three volts. 6.1 volts is very interesting actually. I'm not sure why I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Maybe that's something specific to GPS frequencies. Um, it looks like my board is HM01RTK version 07. And I'm guessing that is a timestamp that is the 14th week of 2023, which would put us somewhere in 
uh, what would that be, April 2023 when this was manufactured. Um, it's currently July, uh, August of 2023. So this unit's only a few, few months old. Um, what else is there? I'm not gonna remove the bottom of the board because I don't wanna disconnect a lot of these antennas. You can see I've already partially dislodged this UFL. I need to push that back down. And the uh, there's some sticky tack here that's supposed to hold this cable, which I need to uh, replace that. Uh, that's in that current state. That's not a good gonna give a good connection. Um, I do see a few what possibly could be MOSFETs right here, and it almost looks like an LED right there, maybe for debugging debugging purposes. Um, all looks to be pretty standard, pretty simple. Uh, look at that solder joint. That's, those are actually pretty good solder joints. That shows to me, I bet you that this was, all this was pick and place uh, done for sure. And I'm curious if that was done by a human or if that was done by machine. I'm guessing it's done by a human, but that's a, if it is, that seems to be a pretty good solder, solder joint. Um, a lot of, a lot of solder right there. Way overkill, but. Um, looking at the cable itself, we do have strain relief right here, which is very smart. You can see they've added webs on this piece of the plastic to make it, make it extra strong. So from my point of view, this seems to be really well designed. Um, one additional, one final comment. Uh, I have seen people say that they have had water ingress into their unit. Looking at this O-ring and this ridge and how this is set up right here, I find this quite surprising that any water would be able to get in. Additionally, when it's mounted properly, that is going to be the, uh, everything is going to slope downwards. So I'm curious if people that are getting water inside, if they're installing it upside down. Um, if they are, that's definitely going to be a problem because you're going to see all those screws. You have that 900 megahertz antenna, you have the USB port, and all those, I'm sure, those are not as well waterproofed. If you look right here at the 900 megahertz antenna, I don't actually see any waterproofing there. Uh, I'm not gonna take it apart, but there might be an O-ring in there, but being on the bottom, being the lowest point, I would expect it to not need an O-ring, but I could definitely see if you install this upside down that water could eventually seep in right there. And same with these plastic screws. Um, there doesn't appear to be any sort of O-ring or insulation on the actual screw mounts on either the bottom or on the top. So definitely it seems to be water resistant from water coming top down, but water going bottom up could theoretically get through these screws or the 900 megahertz antenna. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my analysis. If it, you have any comments or anything that I missed, please post it below.